Hi. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to fix some issues in rigs. So in this particular character, this is one of my new characters that I'm creating um, in a kind of a medieval style. And if you'll notice, as I move the bones in the upper torso, this part of his vest doesn't seem to work very well. Also, we have a pretty long stretch here. Let me zoom in a little bit more, and you can kind of see that that doesn't fit very well. And then, especially as I move it this way, I see this gap. Uh, I could change this a little bit, but this is really not so much about the binding, but uh, I could fix that a little bit. So that's what I'm going to show. Uh, as you rig characters, you'll run into those little issues, and I'll show you what I did to fix those. So one of the things that I'll show you is that if you're not familiar with this, if I go underneath um, Tools, I have Enable Drawing Tools only on frame zero. I have that checked. I believe that's the default situation. I've used it, turn it on sometimes, I turn it off sometimes, but that's helpful so that I don't actually draw onto uh, the character when I'm at a frame other than zero. So because I have that turned on, I'm going to go back to frame zero. Now what I'm going to do, I want to make adjustments to his torso. So I'm going to select the torso layer. And let me zoom in. And if you look closely, you can see that one of the problems with the inside of the vest is that there is no point around where these bones move. Okay, There's a point that's a little bit low here and a point, no point there. So that's one of the issues. And then the other, other issue is that these two points right here are not uh, moving, they're not bound properly. The other issue, if I look at the shoulder, we can see that this point is a little bit off his shoulder, so I could move that down. Um, another way that I can deal with this is that I could put a vest layer that goes behind his shoulder, and so that gap would be filled out. A lot of these things are judgment calls in terms of how much effort you want to put into your rig or your character. Um, do you want to balance it towards simple uh, character or simple rig that's easy to animate and easy to create, or do you want to spend a whole lot of energy into creating a, a, a nice rig that has every little uh, issue taken care of? Over time, I've decided to take the middle ground and make it easy because it just takes too much time to get it perfect and, and very often you can't because once you start animating you see all kinds of minor issues that come up. So it's good to know how to fix these things and how to deal with them. And in the end all of the bones are really just about making it easier to move the points around. So that's a good for beginners, that's an especially helpful thing to think about. It's all about moving the points. Now, one other thing that I want to show, if we look at our character, pay attention to the fact, if you look closely, when I have, I'm on frame zero, and I have this uh, bone selection tool selected, and if you look, there's a set of bones that have a darker border, and in my setting, they're green, um, and you can see, and as I drag the character up, we can see that you have the legs included as well in the midsection and the bones that are going for his torso through his shoulders and neck all of these have that darker border and what's happening is that means that these bones are the ones that are using for flexi binding so that's what that's indicating so this whole torso is controlled by flexi binding by default however some of the points are we use point binding and to discover which ones those are I go over here and I select the uh, selection uh, bind point selection tool and you can look and see that there are bones that are bound to the purple bones or points that are bound to the purple bones and that's really in the shoulder and upper torso there's also the part of the belt is bound to his hip and then we've got some that are bound in a kind of aqua color and so those bones are bound up there. So let me zoom into those and we can see specifically these ones in the neck are bound to this neck bone here. They probably actually should be bound to the head and as we look at the bones 
areas, even though I'm on the torso layer, frame zero, I can select this bone manipulation tool and I can actually manipulate the head and you can see that the points are moving with this bone. Also, you'll notice if I select that bone, what happens is the po points that are bound to it become highlighted. So you can see that those are bound there. So one thing that we can do is that I can go in here and I can select the head bone and I can say now, let's s take these bones and bind them to the head bone. Just the top three. And so what I'm going to do is use the selection tool and come and lasso those three points and I'm going to bind them to the head by selecting bind points. And so now when I select this tool, as I you know select the different bones, we see that the bones are no longer, I mean the points are no longer bound to the neck, but they're bound to the head. And as I go to manipulate them, you can see that it really um, works much better on the head. Okay, so now let's fix this kind of area here. And the thing that makes it, uh, as I manipulate the character, let me go to the uh, torso and kind of move it. As I move it down, it's kind of like this great big spike is the thing that makes it more obvious. And so what I'm going to do, just to re uh, deal with that, is I'm going to zoom in close. And I'm going to now take this um, point and if you'll notice when I select the transform point tool I'm going to press control and click on that point now that point I'm going to manipulate and if I select this tool here and this is uh, Moho 12 um, when I select this tool here it allows me to show the Bezier handles associated with that point now notice that they're both going in the same angle and they're strong going in that direction so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one, move it in a little bit closer, and just make this a little bit more subtle. And so now it doesn't look like such a great big uh, spike, and it seems more natural. And that was just an easy tweak that I could do to that. And as I zoom out, now as I move his torso, you can see it doesn't look as ugly as it did before. Now for the middle torso section, I don't even need to bind the points, I just need to make points available so that as the bones are uh, manipulated, it will have enough points to properly uh, move things around. So I'm just going to go to the Add Point tool, and I'm going to right here select a point right near the junction of those bones, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the Show Bezier Handles, and move the next point on the right side of his vest. I'm going to control click there and now I'm just going to move that point up a little bit. So now if you'll notice like I said when we were looking at this let me go ahead and look at the point selection. These points let me uh, turn that point off by selecting the select points tool and clicking on the background so none of the points are selected by the tools and so if I select the um, point binding tool, we can see that these none of these points in this midsection are bound to particular bones. They're just using flexi binding. And that allows them to twist and bend things as appropriate. Now as I go in to that uh, bone manipulation tool, I can see that uh, this uh, moves with his upper torso much better. But still we have this area here that's kind of a problem. So let's look at that portion. Now, you may think that, oh, okay, these points are right next to this bone, so let's, let's bind them to that bone. But the problem, of course, with that is, as I move his arm, we surely don't want these points to be moving up with his arm when he raises up really high. So instead, if you think about it just a little bit, we want these points bound to his collarbone and that's one of the reasons why I use collarbones uh, for his shoulders. So collarbones are really about manipulating the shoulder section of the character. Okay, so again I can go and have that point binding tool here and notice that these points are bound already to the collarbone 
and we can show that more clearly by clicking on that bone in particular and you can see all of these po points are already, already bound. Now, we have to be careful because when I select these points, I don't want to lose this selection. So if I'm making changes to my rig and I've selected this uh, bind point selection tool, what I want to make sure is I press shift because I want to add to this selection. So these points are already bound to this bone, to the collarbone, and so I want to select these two additional points here. And now all of them are selected and I want to go to bind points here. And so now if you notice these, these points, the little square became a little bit larger so that you can see that they're selected and, and connected, they're now bound to this bone. So if they're just selected, they'll be a little bit smaller, but when they're actually bound, um, the square becomes a little bit larger. Okay, so again, now I can click on the different bones and we can see which ones are actually bound to the different collarbone points and everything. Okay, so now select this manipulation tool and we can bend his torso now and we can see that it moves oh that's so much better than it was and then of course he can move his arm up and down and it doesn't have that problem okay so that's what I wanted to show you how you can tweak your uh, points and help it you know, by binding the points properly and make it better when you have these little areas that didn't quite work the way you wanted them so I hope that's helpful. Bye.